Hey, Redcon Raider here. With special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Eloise, Dracketh, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatly, James Tremay, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. Last time on Scarlet Hollow. There are two of them now. What happened to your glass house? Asshole squatter move in. Kick Dust and Mom out. As you're ready to leave, Janie approaches from the far side of the kitchen. Tabitha remains between the two of you, impatiently tapping her foot. Oh, Retcon, before you go, I heard about what happened last night. I mean, I heard about it before Miss Tabitha mentioned it just now, and then I heard it again. I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry you got caught up in that. You two did right by those kids, though. What a blessing. Everyone getting out of that situation all right. Morning. Is the new blend ready? Of course. Redcon, if you'd like to keep Miles company, Tabitha and I will be just a minute. Oh, excuse me. Wait, you're Retcon, aren't you? My name is Bo. I'm Duke's boy. It's a pleasure to meet you. The policeman told me you saw what happened to my daddy. And with that, breakfast is served. He's a dog. Not only is this mayor a dog, but judging from the series of portraits lining the walls, every mayor of Scarlet Hollow has also been a dog. You can tell this dog is the mayor from his little sash and his fancy top hat. There's a regal air about him, almost as if he knows the position of authority he's been elected to. Before you can catch up to your companions, you're intercepted by a nervous man with a cross around his neck. Sounds like old Gretchen and the mayor have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say? I'm Pastor Daniel. I take it you're a retcon? Everyone's been buzzing about you. I'm so sorry about your aunt, but I'm sure she's in a better place now. If you'd ever like to discuss your beliefs, my door is always open. The basement is what you might expect out of a tortured artist who spends all his time confined to his studio. Discarded canvases line its edges, while trash and sketches leak out from their piles in the corners of the room, hiding the bare cement floor. Ghoulish faces coat the walls in paint, sneering out at their creator. Your mom is so scary. She can be a little intense, kind of overprotective, which I guess makes sense. Anyway, make yourself comfortable. You'll have to forgive the mess. I've been distracted lately. I haven't been cleaning much. Dinner is already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti, and a light salad. Kanika anxiously picks at her food. Stella is nervously talkative. And Reese is suddenly quiet and tense, his shoulders tight as his mother perches on the chair next to his. Dr. Kelly eyes all of you with a sharp, fierce gaze. So, uh, we were talking about maybe watching a movie sometime this week, while well, Retcon is still in town. We'll have to see how you're feeling. 
I can handle a movie, Doc. Yeah, we'll just sit downstairs in the dark. Reese is used to that. I'm sure he'll be okay. You're always overestimating how much you're able to do, Reese. This is why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not like that's ever going to change. I'm sick every day, and I'm not getting better. I don't want to spend the last few miserable years of my life holed up in the basement alone, just because seeing my friends has been deemed too strenuous. I'm an adult, for God's sake. I can't believe I have to ask for permission for my mom just to have my friends over... Reese stops mid-sentence, wincing in pain and wrapping himself in his arms. Don't say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to try and fix... Silence as Dr. Kelly's eyes shoot open. Reese? Reese abruptly pulls himself away from the table and leaves. Hey, you're here sooner than I expected. Hope dinner went okay? It did not. Hey, hope I'm not too late. Have I missed any creepy paranormal stuff? Oscar and Kanika startle as the door swings open. Hold it. You're not taking my cousin along on any more of your little hijinks without me. Whoa. This is where I've seen it. It appears on top of the stain. Stella pulls back the carpet, revealing a hatch. The floor around it is stained in reddish brown. I'm going for it. Wait, do you hear music? Movement stirs as a figure cloaked in shadows rises to attention. Stella? There you are. I would have found you sooner, but the Resonant clearly doesn't want me here. It doesn't seem to have the same issue with these miserable little parasites. Bottom feeders always manage to slip through the cracks, don't they? The sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. One of you must forfeit. It doesn't matter which. Bullshit! I hope I didn't come too late. It wants something, doesn't it? And I think you know which of you should volunteer. You... You must be joking. You take a step towards the light. Sybil is right here. Please, don't do this. You wordlessly step into the spotlight. I'm so sorry, Retcon. I... I don't think I can talk right now. I'll call you, okay? She hurries off down the road. Before I go... Sybil places a hand on your arm, holding you back for a moment. I'm sure you have questions after everything you saw tonight, and about what's happening to you, but let's not get into it here. I think everyone could use a little rest and relaxation right now, yourself included. If you swing by the tea room sometime tomorrow, say, early afternoon... You and I can have a little chat. I'll see you then, Redcon. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly, you're just there, 
buried under your family's musty covers. Before your thoughts can drift away to nightmarish recollections of hours past, your phone buzzes on the nightstand. Hey, sorry I ran off earlier. Wound up in a really bad headspace. I care about you so much. So sorry you got hurt in there. Just needed some time to get a handle on things. Sorry. The spirit of Charles Shaw Jr. has been put to rest at the expense of unknown years of your life. The specter of the night's events will linger over you for every day you have left. A grim reminder of the price you willingly paid for the crimes of a family you never met. Maybe it'll be easier in the morning. Maybe your joints will ache just a little less than they do now. Maybe you can still write the capsized ship of your now broken life. Or maybe things will only get worse from here. Wake up. You open your eyes. It's a new day. And you feel like shit. You were hoping some of your strength would return to you after a good night's sleep, but you feel just as drained as when you dug yourself out of that shallow grave. Your limbs are heavy and your heart struggles to keep up with your movements. You feel like you've lost something that was important to you. Hmm. Well, that is unfortunate, but not unexpected. And you know what? Life goes on. What happened yesterday happened yesterday. Today's a new day. Can't change the past. You can only learn from it. Yes, life goes on. But for how much longer will your life go on? Gosh, thanks for that, narrator. An involuntary shudder runs down your spine. But your thoughts are interrupted by the buzz of your phone on the nightstand. Hey, just wanted to check in. I hope you're doing a little better. Also wanted to ask, have you heard from Stella? You check your messages. There's nothing from Stella. You dial Stella. Hey, what's up? <laughs> just kidding. I'm not able to come to the phone right now. This is actually a recording of my voice. It isn't really me. Technology, huh? Anyways, leave a message. Or don't. I never check this thing. The mailbox is full and can't accept messages at this time. Oh, boy. You know, given what she just went through, I feel like it's probably best to avoid anything that's too heavy. We'll keep it simple. Hey. You wait for a few silent minutes. Your message sits, undelivered. Uh, everyone had a rough night. She's probably still shaken up. Yeah, but I don't love that she's out there somewhere by herself, considering all the shit that's been going down. Look, I know we haven't exactly gotten along, but we should meet up in town and look for her together. I feel like we've gotten along okay. Looks like you have your morning plans in order. But first, a little light dusting. You open the drawers. They both have a bread now. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? Human is back. Smell old now. Maybe changed mind about eating us. 
Could be the end of Dustin and Dustin's mom. I would never eat you guys. I love you. Dustin and mom know better than to trust. When push come to shove, survival more important than friendship. Mm. Dustin and mom spend too much time outside. It different inside. There are enough bread for everyone here. No need to eat friends. Dustin still have childhood innocence. Hope Dustin get to keep that innocence forever. So I take it your glass house is still occupied? Trying to reclaim glass house last night, but asshole squatter too big and strong. Dustin mom stand no chance. Might have to live in Dustin house forever. Human big and strong too. Probably more big and strong than asshole squatter. You fight? Give Dustin Mom glass house back? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm in the best shape for physical altercations at this point, but, um... You know, I'll give it a shot. Anything for you, Dustin. Squatter have sharp things on head. Human be careful. But Dustin Mom would be eternally grateful to human. Dustin, too. Okay, well, uh, I'll look into that. I guess I should, uh, get going. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was much too brave. But, that's that. That looks... different than I remember. But it has been a while. No, no, there's no denying it. The doll moved at some point since your most recent visit. But your long-dead relative's creepy doll isn't the only thing that's different. Someone was in here. Yeah, it does look like we've got this box opened, and um, I guess there's, there's like blood stains or something. Huh. And judging by the residue that was left behind, you're pretty sure you know the culprit. That means he was in your room. But was he there while you were out in the previous day? Or did he enter while you slept unawares just a few feet away? That is something to mull over for the rest of the day. Hmm. You might as well take a shower before starting the rest of your day. You step into the guest bathroom and into the shower. The hot water soothes your aching joints. Despite the state of the bathroom, this shower is a good place. As it rinses your body clean, you... Oh, goodness. I'm sensing a bit of a trend here now. The further into the week this gets, the more nightmarish everything becomes. And it is getting to the point where there is little for us to really contemplate on. That isn't pure nightmare fuel. You think about the afterlife. It's undeniably real at this point. And what you've seen is terrifying. You're done here. You turn off the faucet and dry yourself off. You head downstairs. It's time to face your cousin. Cat. 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 You find her in the kitchen, her shoulders hunched in a tight ball of anxiety. They're striking. This week, of all weeks, as if I didn't have enough on my plate already. Your cousin's posture is tense. But that really isn't surprising, all things considered. You probably don't have long before she leaves to handle the strike. So, um... Ghosts are real. Having a hard time wrapping my head around that. 
I can. What does that actually change about anything? You're a Scarlet. You're probably going to die young anyways. And I still have a mind to run. Uh, I don't know, I just didn't think making a deal with a ghost would feel so... physically bad. I thought it was more, like, metaphorical. You have no one to blame for this but yourself. I wanted to leave. You refused. Who just goes and makes a deal with an angry ghost? Why would anyone do something like that? Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm clearly the weird one here. Hey, um, have you heard anything from Stella? I can't get a hold of her. No, but that's not exactly newsworthy. I'm sure she's just processing what happened last night. We weren't the only ones who were traumatized. Hmm. Okay, I'll bite. So... How, uh, how are you feeling about this whole strike thing? You can be honest with me. Conflicted. It's going to be tough, and despite what a lot of people would have you believe, I'm not relishing the opportunity to pick a fight with my men. I don't think many people take pleasure in breaking strikes. Perlan would have, but that's not me. I don't know. It's complicated. Everything is so complicated. Yeah, welcome to life. What do they want from you, anyway? I haven't seen a list of demands. I'm sure it's just the usual. I promise you that if any of them were in my shoes for a month... They'd be singing a different tune. You know, usually I'm pro-union, but... You, uh, you've put a lot of work into keeping this town running, too. You work hard. They, they should realize that. Right? As if it's easy being the boss. Hmm. That said, you know, you really should have probably seen this coming. Who's to say I didn't? It wasn't ever really a question of if, more a question of when. Forgive me if I didn't expect them to walk out a few days before my mother's funeral. Couldn't even wait until Perlan was in the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's a rough spot. I mean, by most accounts, it's Perlan who is the problem. She was the, the domineering taskmistress. Tabby is... Tabby is harsh, but she's a lot softer around the edges than it sounds like her mother, her grandmother, was. But of course, now that she's in charge, she's the one bearing the brunt of the grievances carried by her miners. The problem with that being, though, that the mine is also struggling and the main thing that's keeping the town's economy going. If it shuts down, then Scarlet Hollow won't last long without it. Hey, I get it. Shit's complicated. You're in a tough spot. Yeah, I am. Hopefully it'll all be over soon. Uh, maybe don't phrase it like that. So you think this has anything to do with the Ditchlings? Maybe they were somehow predicting the strike. Those doughy things we saw in the library yesterday? Look, I get it. There's weird stuff happening right now. But let's not muddy something as mundane as a strike with the supernatural. They're two entirely different things. 
Are they? I feel like we've got a an interconnected web of strange things going on around here. You know, if the mine's in trouble, you could always just sell it. You know, sell the estate. Get out of here while you still can. Not saying you should, but it is an option. Tabitha bristles. I am not giving up like that. This is the Scarlet Mine. I'm not just going to cash out on our family's legacy. I'm bringing the mine back to life, one way or another. Okay, fair enough. Just, you know, be careful. It sounds like you're walking a little close to uh, the sort of moral compromise our ancestors may have made. Um, so I, I guess you should probably get going then, right? Yeah. I've dawdled long enough. Stay safe. No more hijinks. But let me know if you get in trouble, okay? Will do. Tabitha slips past you, her heavy boots thudding down the hall as she marches away to face her employees. Time to figure out the rest of your day. Well, first things first. You walk over to the cat. Oh, c'est toi. Qu'est-ce que tu veux maintenant? Wait, there is something different with you. Have the ears finally caught up to you? Oh, you know, just made a deal with a ghost. I'm old now. Every day that we open our eyes, we are making a deal with life. All of us are stones on the shore, weathered a little more each day by the relentless tides of time. We will all be ground to dust by an uncaring universe. But that is the beauty of life. Wow, uh, deep. Also depressing. Thank you. You know, I missed you last night, Fru-Fru. I was cold and lonely, and there were wolves after me. That makes one of us. Harsh. Will you, uh, will you ever let me pet you? And coat my fur in your disgusting human oils? None. I don't suppose you know anything about the mystical stone carvings that are scattered around Scarlet Hollow. I am not here to be your comment d'Etan, Tien Detective. Je suis un chate. I am here to watch you flail about in the darkness. I am not here to provide answers to whatever mysteries confound your feeble American mind. Well, that just seems like a bad thing to say, because I'm fairly certain if we let her know there are possums in the house, that will just put them in far more danger than they may already be in. <laughs> so, instead, we will simply nod respectfully. You nod respectfully to Fru-Fru. She scoffs, her tail twitching with annoyance. But you can sense she's less annoyed than she usually is. Maybe she's getting used to you. Yep, such is the way of cats. All right, Fru-Fru, see you around. Good talk. Finger guns. She scoffs as you turn away. Yeah, I love you too. Let us feed the beast. If Stella's MIA, who knows when you'll get a chance to eat? And who knows just how much your new affliction will affect your appetite? You make yourself a PB&J in anticipation for the long day ahead of you. And that's that. Or is it? Whatever kicked out Dustin's mom is in the garden right now. You'd better look into it before you head into town. Because goodness knows what's the worst that could happen. The air is chilly today, the overcast sky hanging oppressively over the weed-choked flower beds. You start carefully picking your way through the underbrush. It doesn't take much effort to find a path. 
Cuttings of prickly raspberry bushes and tangled vines litter the ground around the greenhouse. That's unusual. I could swear the first day we came out here. The path was too overgrown for us to actually reach the greenhouse, so someone recently cleared a path then. Possibly Wayne, who we saw out here. Or... Or Tabby, who we told about Wayne being out here. Or someone else. Someone else we could be overlooking. The glass house, one could say. Gosh, really? This... This house-shaped object made entirely of glass? I'm not sure I'm seeing it. You step towards the door. Oh, that... That was a goat. It's sealed shut by a lock, and you catch a brief glimpse of a horned shadow through the ancient, clouded glass. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a goat we just glimpsed. Which is an animal that was prominently featured in the strange ghost visions we had in Chapter 3. And it was on that stone we found next to Charles Shaw Jr.'s body. It was a goat. Yes, yes, that is... Thank you, thank you, eyeballs. So this is Dustin's mom, Squatter. You examine the lock. It looks sturdy. You'll need some tools if you're going to get this open. Maybe Stella or Kanika could lend a hand later. Or, you know, we could just bust out one of those panels, but... I guess that might be a bit much. Hey, so what's your name, little guy? Goat? Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? And uh, how'd you uh, end up in a glass house? That that feels like a really bad place for a goat to be. Human put me here. Can't complain. Pretty sweet digs, honestly. Stays nice and warm. And there's plenty of eats, too. Did that human have a brown coat and big boots? Coat like what? Fur? Ah, not brown fur. Yellow fur. Just on the top, like all you humans. Don't know what boots are. Can't help you there. Right, right. So yellow hair would still imply Tabby. I don't know if we've had any other prominent blonde characters. Though then again, we don't really know what Wayne looks like under that mask. So where'd you come from, anyway, before the glass house? Farm? Used to live with other guys like me. Kind of miss them, but not that much. Don't got to share anymore. Hmm. All right, goat. I uh, guess guess I'll leave you to it then. See ya. Or not. It's a wild world out there. That it is, goat. That it is. You've investigated the garden. With Stella missing, it's best not to keep Kanika waiting for much longer. So why would Tabby need a goat? That is strange. Ritual sacrifice, perhaps? Or feeding the mysterious prisoner in the Forbidden Wing? You head to the front door and begin your trek to the town below. The birds sound different today, muffled like your ears are full of cotton. The dull sun shines down on the surrounding wilderness, seeming to wash the color from the world. But you're adjusting. Already your body is starting to accept the change that has come over it, to accept that this is how things will be from here on out. Yeah, I guess so. Hey guys, I guess this is just the new normal? Glimpses of pale figures dot your periphery. You haven't seen ditchlings in the middle of the day before. They're getting bolder. To your surprise, you find a familiar face making its way up the path towards you. Hey, I was just coming up to see you. Hope you were able to get some sleep after everything that happened last night. They don't say anything about your appearance, but you can see them take you in. The light of day revealing your new features clearly for the first time. 
you, uh, doing okay? Um, <laughs> that is a loaded question, my friend, but, you know, you know, we all get older, some just, uh, sooner than others. I'm sure I'll, I'll deal with it. Uh, the gray streak is pretty cool. Add some sophistication to your look. That ghost was trying to punish you, but I, I think it wound up doing you a favor. All right, let's not go crazy here. How about you, Avery? You, uh, are you really feeling chill after everything that happened last night? I'd be lying if I said last night didn't have an impact. I kind of feel bruised all over, physically and spiritually. But hey, that's part of life, right? Nobody makes it to the end completely unscathed. That is very true. And I'm kind of thrilled that my new emotional baggage comes from a ghost instead of some boring normal trauma. Fair enough. There's ditchlings everywhere now, even though it's daytime. Avery turns to survey the tray line. Yeah, I noticed a few on the way up. They're kind of funny now that I'm getting a good look at them, with their scrunched up little Sharpe faces. So, should I be worried about these things? I know they're a bad omen or something, but like, are they dangerous? They're not going to eat me if I take a wrong turn, right? No, but they may... They may lay eggs inside of you, so, you know, there's that. Oh, is that all they do? That doesn't sound too bad. I think I could survive a parasitic larva or two. Just glad being eaten alive isn't on the table. I mean, I feel like parasitic larvae still eat you alive, but... Sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, is getting a parasite like that really any different than being eaten alive? They're still eating you, it's just slower and from the inside out. If anything, I feel like that might be worse. Sure, I get where you're coming from, but that's a pretty big difference. If a mountain lion gets me, that's just kind of it, you know? I'm sure the wonders of modern medicine would be able to yank a couple of eggs out of me. Heck, maybe I'd even be able to let the eggs hatch instead of just having them removed. It'd be sad to kill the babies, but at the end of the day, if it's me or them, I gotta go with self-preservation. What? Um... Wow, I, uh, you know... I gotta say, Avery, I was wondering when you would say or do something really weird. You just felt, you felt too normal for a town like Scarlet Hollow. Eh, normal's boring. Hope that's not a deal breaker for our little friendship. Nah, we're good. But I will not flirt, for I have already pledged my heart to Stella and sweet Gretchen. So how are you doing today? You all right after last night? I'm great. With something like possession, I kind of feel like there are more upsides than downsides. There aren't a lot of people out there who can say they've been through something like that. It's a pretty cool badge of honor as far as I'm concerned. Sure. Hey, have you, have you heard anything from Stella? I haven't heard from her, though we don't text much. And I haven't checked with Winnie to see if she came in for an early breakfast or anything. But if you haven't heard from her, that doesn't sound great. Seeing her like that last night was awful. She's usually so unflappable. You know, Kanika and I are meeting up to look for her. You want to come? Absolutely. 
I told Winnie I'd be coming in late today, so I've got time. I don't know how much time, though. From what I saw this morning, the diner is hopping. It's absolutely packed with miners. They must be using it as home base for the strike. Oh, by the way, there's a strike going on. I'm sure you already know that, though. I have to imagine Tabitha would have told you this morning. That she did. All right, let's head to town. Yeah, good idea. You and Avery start back down the path to town. It isn't long until you once again find yourself on the main street of Scarlet Hollow. Redcon, you made it. And you picked up an Avery along the way. Hope you're both doing okay. Like, emotionally. Yeah, I'm not too bad. That's good. I feel like I got crushed by a steamroller or something. Joints all out of whack, totally exhausted and super foggy. Mom has been insisting I caught a cold and I wasn't buying it, but as of this morning, I've, I've come around. It's definitely something beyond exhaustion, even considering the ridiculously stressful week we've all had. But I'm not going to let that stop me from looking for Stella. So, tell me, Kanika... You still think there's a rational explanation for all this? Kanika sighs heavily. Rational? Sure. Rooted in the reality that, until a few days ago, I thought was devoid of all magic and supernatural shit? No. Ghosts are real. They can suck you into illusory dimensions and puppet your body like a, a fleshy marionette. Next thing you know, we'll find out there's a secret society of warlocks running the country. Or that angels are real. You gotta admit, it's kind of thrilling, isn't it? Anything could be possible. Who knows what the new day holds for all of us. It would be a little more thrilling if it weren't terrifying. All the magical stuff we've found so far just wants to hurt us. We need a magical being that's on our side. Where are the magical girls when you need them? Japan? Though I guess we already have an animal whisperer, don't we? That's pretty magical. Wait, you can talk to animals? For real? When were you going to tell me? Wow, I'm going to need you to tell me what every animal we meet is saying. This is too cool. You, uh, really took that in stride, didn't you? I take everything in stride. There's no better way to live. I like you, Avery. It is a very healthy mindset. Or maybe it's super unhealthy. Who's to say? <laughs> really? Ah, <laughs> uh, the Scooby-Doo. Classic. Kanika, you know, your mom is totally a witch, right? Maybe she's our magic girl. No way. She's just a new age crystal and herbs lady. She's not... You don't think. She could be for real. Anything seems possible these days. But that would mean everything I thought I knew was wrong. And my whole life has been a lie. Uh, I need to take a page out of Stella's book and just block this shit out. I need to be focused. I can't keep having all these existential crises. Pretty sure that's just part and parcel of living in Scarlet Hollow, but glad you're finally catching up. So is uh, someone watching the general store while we're all out looking for Stella? Mom and Miles can deal for another day while we go looking for Stella. This is important. Hey, not arguing, just asking. Not that the store isn't, but if something bad happened to her and I was spending my time mining the register... 
I don't think I could live with that. You know, I was kind of surprised you reached out to me after the issues between you and Tabitha. Right, right. She was really pissed off that we called Tabitha to join us on the ghost hunt. Okay, so that's why she said we weren't getting along. We've been supportive of Tabitha, but Kanika hates Tabitha. Okay, that tracks, I guess. Uh, you sacrificed years of your life to exercise a ghost for people you hadn't met until, what, two days ago? That kind of outweighs whatever ongoing feud I have with your cousin. And I'm not going out there alone, because the last thing I want is to go missing while looking for someone who went missing. We do everything in groups from now on. Good call. People shouldn't be judged by their family anyways. Whatever people may think of your cousin, it has nothing to do with you. Well, except for the hereditary curse and all. Hmm. You know, um, I've been thinking about it. And with Stella, I think, I think last night just pushed her over the edge. I know I've only known her a couple of days, but it, it feels like she has a tendency to, to run from difficult emotions. Usually she just deflects, changes the subject, but I guess this time she wound up literally running from her problems. You're absolutely right. And as her friends, we can't let her be alone at a time like this. I've made that mistake before. Plus, she could get mobbed by those weird little creatures. Or worse. Exactly. This is no time for anyone to be off on their own. Who knows what kind of weird stuff is out there? After the past couple of nights, I wouldn't be surprised if there were actual Bigfoots in the woods, just waiting to eat any human who wanders too far from civilization. Do Bigfoots thirst for human flesh? Is that some kind of common knowledge I wasn't keyed in on? I wouldn't be surprised, is all I'm saying. Okay, let's get started. I don't want to waste another minute. Where to first? Ah, and then this looks to be our first big major decision point. Um, as with many of our past decisions, I imagine we have a finite number of choices we can make before we have to go and spill the tea with Sybil. You know what? We're past time, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. We've made some decent headway, laid the groundwork for a new day in Scarlet Hollow. We'll hit the pause button for now. I will carefully consider our options as to where we should head first and second, and maybe third if we actually get that far. And we'll pick up here next time, as the hunt for Stella begins in earnest. Man, it is great to be back in the hollow. See you then. Oh, and remember... Although I do love playing Scarlet Hollow, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official websites. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description. <laughs>